welcome to Monet Cafe and Susan Jenkins Fine Art. I'm Susan Jenkins and Monet Cafe is a place where you can learn a lot and today I have wanted for so long to learn how to paint with pastels on wood and I have finally figured it out. So join me in this video where I'll be revealing the secret recipe. Well, no, it's not a secret, but I'm going to go over a lot of things to teach you how to do this. And of course, I have my sweet little studio mascot Jackson in the studio with me today. And oh, I have a brand new Etsy shop. There's so much to do, it's been a long time coming, but I finally have gotten started on my Etsy shop. I've got a lot of new paintings submitted. Thank you so much to those who have already bought paintings. It's really blessed me, and I'll be uploading new paintings all the time, so keep checking it out. I do have a coupon code, so check out the description section of this video. Now here's a sneak peek at the final painting that was done on a wood panel, and I'm calling this part one because this was kind of my experimentation process. I'm going over what I did and how I'm correcting it and have already corrected it for part two that will be coming hopefully soon. Hello artists and friends, I'm artist Susan Jenkins and welcome into my studio today where I'm going to do a little experimenting. I have wanted for a long time to be able to apply or create a pastel painting on a wood panel. Now Arteza, the company Arteza was nice enough to send me this product complimentary and I'm going to do a little experimenting today and hopefully come up with a technique where we can apply pastel paintings to a wood panel. Now, how would we frame that? Well, I've got another product coming soon that I might be able to share some tips on that as well. All right. Let's begin by showing you the products that I used. I found a recipe online for this process from another artist from a long time ago, and I have tweaked the recipe since this video, so that's why I said there'll be a part two. Now, here are the Arteza wood panels. It comes in a pack of five. They're very smooth. Uh, you really don't need to sand them or anything to begin this process. So I like them. I'm definitely going to do this again. Now the other products that I'm using, uh, what he recommended in his recipe, and I will share you his recipe, you'll see it soon, is regular gesso, not clear gesso like I often use. I didn't have enough regular gesso, so I altered the recipe by adding some clear gesso. I'll go into all of this as I put it together. Clear gesso, just so you know, has, I'm putting it in my fingers right now, has a little bit of grit to it, a little bit of sand. That's why you'll see I have so many videos where I talk about creating your own pastel surface using clear gesso. Not the regular gesso I showed before. It does not have the grit. And this product is called Dry Pumice by Matisse. I couldn't find it on Dick Blick, but I've had this for years. Now, just so you know, this feels really a lot like the sand that is in the clear gesso. However, the recipe that you see on my scratchy notebook down there, the gentleman who made this called for marble dust. I didn't have any marble dust, so I ordered it, but for this video, I replaced the marble dust with the dry pumice. And just so you know, I'm doing a voiceover, ignore my hands here. Just so you know, the dry pumice is a great product to use uh, in creating your own pastel surfaces, but in using it this time, it came out a little bit too gritty or too coarse. So again, you're going to see this whole experimentation process and get to the final successful results. All right, let's mix this up and have some fun. Here is my setup with all of my measuring tools and ingredients, and I'm about to put the recipe across the screen here for you to watch. And again, this recipe is the one that I got from another YouTube video. I'll talk about the, that more in a minute. It's one cup of water, one cup of regular gesso, 12 tablespoons of marble dust, which I did not have. You'll, you'll hear me talk about that. You mix it all together. He recommended a blender. I didn't use a blender because I was experimenting with different products since I didn't have all the ingredients. I cut the recipe down since I didn't need that much, and I ended up just using a half a cup of water, a half a cup of the gesso, but you notice the this is a little quarter cup container I'm using. So I used a quarter cup of the regular gesso and now I'm putting a quarter cup of the clear gesso because I didn't have enough regular gesso. So I'm mixing all that up. Again, it's a half a cup of water and quarter cup of regular gesso, quarter cup of clear gesso, and I did one, two, three, four, five, six uh, tablespoonfuls of the dry pumice. Again, I am really altering his recipe because I was impatient. I couldn't wait to try and I just used what I had on hand. 
I decided to tint my concoction with a color and I'm using some acrylic ink. I have these two purples. This one's real frosty or um, metallic looking. It's a lighter purple. It's that real pale one on the top. The other one at the bottom is one that's called Purple Lake. I really love this color. It goes on really dark. You can use these acrylic inks for underpaintings. Um, so it didn't look dark on that card, but you can, you can actually get it to be a really nice dark value for underpaintings. And I will share a little disclaimer. I'm going to have quite a few disclaimers in this video because I was still in the experimentation process, but I kind of realized that was such a large quantity of white that I had to use too much acrylic ink to even get it to tone a color. So it's way better after the fact, once it's dried on the surface, to then tint um, so you don't use up so much product, you know, acrylic inks aren't cheap. So anyway, but I did go ahead and tint it and I was like, okay, whatever. Now here's my little, uh, it's actually from our Chinese restaurant, little containers that are so handy. So that's my little storage container. And I decided to use a roller brush to apply this. I wanted it to be really smooth. And by the way, I'm speeding this up because this wasn't the grand success story that you're going to see in the next video. In that one, I will slow everything down. So I'm kind of giving you a little precursor and I'll share again the things that I did not like about my mixture. So I, again, the roller, I thought it might go on um, smoothly. Actually, I think it was a combination of the roller and the pumice. The pumice is much grittier than the marble dust that you'll see me use in the next video because I finally got my marble dust. All right, so the, the gentleman in the video recommend three coats, doing it uh, vertically and then horizontally. Oh, and because my roller brush was, I saw the texture, I could see it, I decided to grab a, a foam brush and uh, try to get it more smooth and it sort of worked. It didn't work great, but it was a little more smooth than it was with the roller brush. And after blowing it dry, here's my second coat. I did what he recommended. I only did two coats, by the way. I did it uh, one way vertically, one way horizontally. I, w I put it on with the roller brush like I did before, and then I smoothed it out with the foam brush. Also, I like to save my um, wet utensils in a little Ziploc bag to keep them fresh so I don't have to go wash them out right away. Now, I am sanding it down right here. I could tell by feeling it. It was just too gritty, and it did help a bit. And again, you are seeing my first go at this. So I hope I don't get a lot of thumbs down because this one didn't work as good as the one that the video that will be coming. All right, so here's the board and I'm, I guess you could say skeptical. <laughs> we'll see. I sanded off, as you could see, it was very textured. So I sanded it off so that it won't, when it's so textured, it literally eats up your pastels. I mean, you will run out of your past, your expensive pastels so quickly. I was showing another product here that I've used that was too coarse in the past. It's Golden Coarse Molding Paste. It was part of a video I did called Eight Ways to Make Your Own Pastel Papers. That's a great video. And I have many videos on making your own pastel surfaces. Here's another one. It's a great way to save money. Pastel papers are so expensive. Here's another technique of a video I made. And I love this particular video right here. And a fourth one. I think I have five or six videos. So I wanted to let you know, I'm going to share links to all these videos in the description section of this video in case you want to check those out. Here's the reference photo I'll be using. It was one of many photos I took from a sunflower field near my home. I did a recent painting tutorial, oh, a video or two back on this gorgeous field. I did it, a regular pastel painting on that. Now I'm doing a sketch. I'm speeding this up because this is not about the painting. Since I had some challenges with the surface, it's more about the experimentation and the way to make your own surface. Now you guys have shared you like my new technique of showing all the pastels I use. These happen to be all of the pastels that I use for this video. The TL Darks, that stands for Terry Ludwig. Those were the Giro, it's not called Romantic Landscape, it's called Poetic Landscape. I wrote it down wrong. The Giro set, that's a Sennelier, the turquoise and burgundy one up there. I used that Great American, that orange one. Uh, more Giro's all around that word. Terry Ludwig's pointing to the right. And down below NP is New Pastel. So, I'll share more about this in videos to come. I just wanted to show you and thank you guys for that feedback. I'm going to start doing this in the future to help you guys know what pastels I'm using. All right, here I go on my very 
coarse surface. Oh, by the way, the sketch, I just used a charcoal pencil. This is one of those dark Terry Ludwigs. That, that one's a dark green. The first one I used was a really dark purple. I think it's the Terry Ludwig eggplant color. So I can tell already that because I used the dry pumice, instead of the marble dust it was really coarse oh you saw me use a chamois cloth there i've been using that to blend there i am using it again that's just a little chamois cloth and it really blends well on this surface and multiple surfaces it does not blend well on new art paper there i am writing down my terry ludwig darks um, and now i'm getting in a giro that's the poetic landscape all of these right here are the giro i love giro pastels i always say it's like goldilocks you know how she said um uh, it's just right that the bed wasn't too hard or too soft and that's how those uh, pastels are they're kind of a nice in-between pastel and I could feel though that I was losing more pastel in the application than I typically do so I decided to go ahead and finish the painting but I knew right away I was gonna have to change my process and I'm just gonna again I'm speeding this up because I I didn't want this video to be about this particular painting. I want you to see how it worked, but it was more about how you too can do this. And I don't recommend using the pumice for this example. Part two videos coming, and just so you know, I've already done it. I got my marble dust in, I used the marble dust. I did change the recipe a little bit and it worked great for me. I have another wood surface that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys in the next video. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. I'm having so much fun with these. Oh, that's my little cigar cutter that is great for cutting uh, pastels in half, especially round ones, because the cigar cutter is round. So I'll tell a little bit about this painting. Typically with sunflowers, I've learned that um, our brain tells us to grab all those gorgeous yellowy gold colors, but sunflowers actually have a lot of uh, darker, cooler, uh, purpley colors in them uh, in the shadow areas. They have a lot of oranges and reds and darker, deeper values than you would think. And then it's only typically the tips of the pastels, uh, pastels, <laughs> the tips of the sunflower petals that get that bright gorgeous gold so you know reserve the temptation to try to do that see here i'm putting down some reds i get my darker values down first and then just like sprinkles on a cake uh, you pop those brighter golds and yellows on more towards the end now my sunflower as you can see in the reference image was a little bit um sad looking <laughs> well i shouldn't say sad he's standing up straight but his petals had started to I guess dry out in the sunshine it was probably getting closer to the end of its life you know like me <laughs> i can relate to some of these sunflowers and you may have seen in my other past i mean my other sunflower video that i shared i literally grew my own sunflowers in, behind my home it was such a fascinating process and i actually harvested them and it was really neat i have that little footage at the end of my other sunflower video i think it's the sunflower painting video i think it's the video right before this one if you want to go watch that one it was really fun now you see i've got my oranges down on top of the darks and now i'm adding some golds but they're still not the the brightest golds that i will add or yellows that i will add those really get more i noticed this was kind of backlit and it was the top um, tips of the petals that were really getting the sunshine. Now you see I'm adding blues and purples. I find that makes a great color in that um, uh, center section of the sunflower. It had more dark in it um, than I had originally gotten down, so I, I keep working with that. I love these reds. That's another um, Giro pastel, I believe. No, uh, that's a Great American. I just marked it down. Great Americans are very, very soft. I like them I think I lean more towards Terry Ludwig's more, um, but but Great Americans are awesome too. So you know I don't want to I don't want to be too partial towards any one pastel. Now I loved that turquoise blue. That was a Sennelier. Oh, I love Sennelier pastels. I just really love them. Um, I didn't use a lot in this particular painting of my new set. I've been talking about a lot. Uh, it's the Unison 120 half stick set talk about that set a lot because I think it's a great set for beginners. Once you know you're going to be painting with pastels and you think, okay, I'm going to put a little bit of an investment into some nicer, uh, larger set of pastels, I like that 
unison 120 half stick set because it is a set where you can paint so many things you've got it's got a great assortment of pastels but I didn't use it I don't think any of them for this pastel even though I love unison pastels so I'm jabbering honey here I thought you know I might as well give you a little uh, pastel instruction oh gotta have a little brownie I put some brownies in the oven and I made some coffee and oh it was such a nice break don't you just love painting you know and I love our little happy family here in Monet Cafe and oh thank you all my patrons um, for those of you who decide to support me on my Patreon page, um, I'll put a link to that, to my Patreon page. You have allowed Monet Cafe for me to have more time and, uh, better equipment and, um, everything is better because of the financial contribution from those of you who support me on the Patreon page. It's only $5 a month and you do get extra content, but I know that a lot of people support me and this channel. I don't think of it as me. I think of it as this vehicle, Monet Cafe, to get art out to so many people. We have people in villages that aren't even on Google Maps. You know, it's just people in remote areas sometimes or people who don't have access. We have a lot of handicapped people. We have a lot of elderly people. And I love it. That's just, it, it is totally my dream come true, what is happening with Monet Cafe, was being able to bring you guys along with on, me on my journey of learning art and bring it to everybody. So it's a big old happy family. It's awesome. So thank you, patrons. You're helping this channel have more and better content. All right, enough of that. I just have to brag on my patrons. All right, so um, I'm going to play some music. You guys can watch the rest of this. And I'll show you a close-up at the end of the texture of the board. It is too textured. And again, part two, I have fixed this problem and I'm excited because I'm definitely going to be doing more paintings on wood and on the neat little wood surface that I'm going to be sharing with you soon. All right, enjoy the music. Stay tuned to the end because I'm going to show that close up.
I thought I'd slow this back down to real time at the end here so you can um, hear that scratchy sound that the pastels are making on the surface. I love that sound. And it's probably making more of that sound because of the texture of the board. And so I, I just wanted to share with you a little bit of the things I liked and didn't like about my mixture of this um, concoction, I'm calling it recipe. Uh, I'm adding some uh, teals, some brighter teals on those leaves. The leaves on the main sunflower are actually very dark in value. I have them really dark on some of those underneath parts in the back. But uh, I liked how they had some uh, highlights that were more of cooler greens in the turquoise family. But anyway, some of the things that I liked about the surface was I do like a textured surface. I like it gives a, at the end of this painting, it almost had an old world feel because of the texture. Um, one of the things I did not like about it was, especially down towards the bottom, the top parts, I think I must have sanded it better at the top part of the board than I did at the bottom. Oh, I love adding bits of purple in the sunflower head there. Um, but down towards the bottom, it was even more textured. Again, I probably didn't sand it enough. I was anxious to try it, you know? Have you ever done that? So um, it was eating up more of my pastels down at the bottom. And uh, I shouldn't say it was doing it terribly, but it's just not a technique I would want to use long-term because these pastels get expensive, you know? So again, on a positive note, my new recipe is way better. I found a neat way that's going to work for me quite well on the wood panels like this. I'm going to do another one on the wood panel. I haven't done that one as of the making of this video, but I experimented on something. I'll show you again. I'm giving you all these little teasers to keep you staying till the end of the video. I experimented on another wood surface uh, because I didn't want to um, waste so much product you know like I used a lot of that pumice that dry pumice uh, like six or seven tablespoonfuls um, to make the uh, original surface that I used to put on this board and uh, so I, I wanted to downsize my my mixture just to play and experiment by the way I tried this exact mixture that I used on this painting I tried it on watercolor paper and then it was still rough but I took a piece of 800 I think it was 400 or 800 grit sandpaper sanded it down yes believe it or not on the watercolor paper I sanded it down just to knock off the roughness and it worked great so I might be sharing another video coming up soon all right I am going to show you the final painting and give you some more thoughts all right I've zoomed in here to hopefully allow you to see the texture again I like texture to a degree unless it's uh, messing with your pastel supply. <laughs> so I enjoyed this creative process. Here's my resulting mess of pastels. Jarose, Terry Ludwig's, Sennelier, Great American. All right, here is the sneak peek at the other wood product that I used. So Arteza actually sent me this set of 45 wood slices. This is literally wood like from a branch of a tree and they're all very uniform and the bark is still surrounding them. It's very fun. So I thought instead of using a wood panel to experiment, these are smaller and easier. So I used these to play around with to finally come up with my concoction recipe that works great. That top one didn't work as good as the second one. The second one with the pink flowers here. This is the new improved recipe that I'm going to do again and again. And by the way, these wood slices, they would work great for gifts or Christmas ornaments even. And stay tuned. I have a product that I'm going to be using to hopefully help us not have to use glass and perhaps seal these wood paintings to display without framing. Wouldn't that be a miracle? I can't wait to try. All right, my artistic friends, I hope you are feeling the blessings of art during this trying time in our lives. Become a patron if you like, and of course, happy painting.